Hi, I'm Sam. Welcome to Oxford Online English. In this lesson, you can learn what a vocabulary notebook is, why it's useful for learning vocabulary more quickly, and how to use it. Part 1. Why should you use a vocabulary notebook? A vocabulary notebook is a small book where you can record new words. The best vocabulary notebook is small enough to put in your pocket so you can carry it everywhere with you, like this. Remembering new vocabulary is something that many students find difficult. To really know a word means that you're able not just to recognise it, but to use it correctly. But how can you go from recognising and understanding a word to using it well in your English speaking and writing. You need to form a long-term memory of the word or phrase you're trying to remember. When you learn a new word in class or during self-study, it's in your short-term memory. You're able to recognise and even use the word during your studies and maybe even for a short time afterwards, but then you may forget it you need to move the word into your long-term memory. The only way to do this is to see, hear and use the word many times. So then, why is a vocabulary notebook helpful for expanding your vocabulary more quickly? A vocabulary notebook is an excellent tool to help you move new words from your short-term to your long-term memory. You can use it to record and review vocabulary, enabling you to see, hear and use the vocabulary many times, which will help you to remember it. But how do you use a vocabulary notebook? There are lots of different ways to use a vocabulary notebook, but two things are important. Record and review. Part two. How to record the meaning of new vocabulary. Let's look at recording vocabulary. When you learn new vocabulary, record it instantly. That means write it down at that moment. The physical act of writing it down can help you to remember it later. So, whether you're in class, studying at home or out and about, the best thing to do is to record the word when you learn it. Don't wait until later. There are four easy steps. The first step is recording words clearly and correctly. This may sound obvious, but many students find they're unable to read their own notes or they record and then learn words with incorrect spelling. So, always check how words are spelt. So, what else do you need to record? The second step is to record the meaning of the vocabulary. There are a number of ways to do this depending on the word or phrase that you want to learn. Let's use our example, soup. Do you think writing P or chicken will help you to remember the meaning of this word? It's true that P and chicken are examples of soup. But writing down the meaning like this might not help you to remember what soup means. However, I'm quite sure most countries have soup. So translation is a quick and clear way to show the meaning of soup. I speak a little Turkish, so I'll use that. In Turkish, soup is çorba. Many students also find that drawing pictures helps them to remember words. Put the picture on the right-hand page for meaning. For simple words like soup, recording the translation in your own language is okay. However, many words don't have a direct translation. For this reason, it's usually best to record the meaning in English. But use your own words. Don't just copy the meaning from the dictionary. This will make it easier for you to understand and remember the meaning. Let's do an example. Do you know the word tasty? It describes food that has a strong taste or flavour. 
We can also say that this is a positive adjective, similar to delicious. So we can write a positive symbol next to the meaning. With adjectives, it's also a good idea to record the opposite. We can use this sign for opposite. The opposite of tasty is tasteless. It describes food that has no flavour. This is a negative adjective, so we can write a negative symbol next to the meaning. Hopefully, now you have a good idea of how to record meaning in your notebook. Using a vocabulary notebook is a learning process and should be personal to you. So experiment with different ways of recording meaning. But however you decide to record meaning, one thing is important. It must be clear to you when you come back to it. So there are four steps to recording vocabulary. First, record the word clearly and correctly. Second, record meaning. What's next? Part three, how to record the form of new vocabulary. Ask yourself or your teacher, is your new vocabulary a noun, a verb, an adjective, an idiom? Remember that phrases can be nouns or verbs too. So this is true for both words and phrases. If it's a noun, is it countable or uncountable? Make a note so that you understand how to use it. You can record the form in brackets next to the word. Here, soup is a noun, so you can write N after it. Soup can be countable or uncountable. You can show this by writing C stroke U. You can put A, D, J to show that tasty and tasteless are adjectives. It's helpful to use abbreviations to record form. Here are some examples. N is for noun. V is for verb. C is for countable. U means uncountable. ADJ is for adjective. ADV is for adverb. Capital I, capital D is for idiom. MWV means multi-word verb. Abbreviations help you to record form quickly and use less space in your notebook. So, when recording vocabulary, you should record it clearly and correctly, record the meaning, record the form. There's one more thing you should record. Part four. How to record the pronunciation of new vocabulary. You're learning English. That means you know how confusing and irregular English pronunciation can be. That's why you should record some details about the pronunciation of words. You could write the sounds in phonetics, mark stressed syllables, Mark any silent syllables or letters and record any difficult or irregular sounds. For example, students sometimes confuse the pronunciation of soup with soap. So the vowel sound here is important. This is the symbol for the Ooh sound. You don't have to use phonetic symbols, but they can help you to remember correct pronunciation of words. Vowel sounds are a good place to start. You can write the ooh sound under the letters that make that sound. 
The word tasty has more than one syllable. So you should record the stress in the word. You can do this by underlining the vowel where the stress is. In tasty, the stress is on A. Some students may also find it helpful here to record the vowel sound. The vowel sound is A. Tasty. In speech, the second T in tasteless is silent. You can show this by writing a small cross under the second T. Tasteless. So, now we have the basic information we need to record. We've written the words clearly and correctly, and we've checked spelling. We've also recorded the meaning, the form, and the pronunciation of the words. You may notice that I've used different colours. It's helpful to use colour in your notes and to be consistent. That means always using the same colour for the same things. You could use different colours for different parts of speech, as I've done here. My nouns are black and my adjectives are red. You could use different colours for verbs and adverbs too. This helps you understand and remember the form of a word quickly. Also, using a different colour for your pronunciation notes helps them stand out. I always use green. Finally, you might want to add some information to your notes later, so leave some space. What else might you want to add? You'll see some ideas later. Part 5. Remember your vocabulary by reviewing and developing your notes. So, now you know how to record new vocabulary in your notebook. But, that's not enough. You also need to be able to remember the vocabulary. When you're learning English, you can forget around 80% of your vocabulary if you don't review it. Reviewing vocabulary means seeing it again and using it. You don't need to spend a long time each time you review. The most important thing is that you review it many times over time. Carrying a vocabulary notebook with you everywhere helps you to do this. Let's make a review plan. Imagine you recorded some vocabulary in your notebook today. How should you review it? Research shows that students forget 80% of what they've learned within 24 hours of a lesson. So, a short time after you've written some new vocabulary down, take five minutes to look at it again. The very best time to do this is 10 minutes after, when you still remember most of the lesson. Maybe you're waiting for the bus, or having a coffee. You can take your notebook out and review the vocabulary quickly. Read through what you've written. Remember the meaning, the form, and the pronunciation. Say the words in your head. Soup is chorba. Then test yourself. You can cover the meaning side of the notebook. Look at the words and see if you can remember the meaning. Then you can cover the words on the left side and see if you can remember how to say them by looking at the meaning. Chorba is soup. Focus on the pronunciation. Soup. Then uncover the left side and check the pronunciation and the word. Later that day, when you have a bit more time, you can sit down and add some information to your notes. Firstly, you should add collocations if you can find them. 
A good dictionary will give you collocations. Use an English learner's dictionary, such as Oxford, Cambridge or Macmillan, to find the vocabulary. What about collocations with soup? We often use words for different types of soup. For example, chicken soup, potato soup, tomato soup. We can also say a bowl of soup or a tin of soup. Write the collocation in the space you left under the vocabulary. This will help you to remember the word or phrase in the way that it's actually used. Another good tip is to write sentences using your new words. The best way to do this to help you remember your new vocabulary is to personalise them. For example, my mum loves tomato soup, but I hate it. So, at the end of day one, you've found some new vocabulary. You've recorded the meaning, the form and the pronunciation. You've reviewed it by looking at it again as soon as possible after you first saw it. Then you've reviewed it again by looking it up in a dictionary and adding collocations and a personalised sentence. Congratulations! You now have enough information in your notebook to start using it to really expand your vocabulary. I hope this lesson's helped you. Remember, you can find more of our free English lessons on OxfordOnlineEnglish.com. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.